everyone. You're very welcome back to the Sacred Space Sanctuary. If you haven't already done so, I invite you to clear your mind and your heart and just get ready for worship with our great God today. It's a beautiful day where I live and I hope it's a beautiful day where you live. And of course, it's always a beautiful day when we can be assured that we have our Lord and God present with us and the Holy Spirit in our hearts. What more could we ask for? And the joy of Jesus lives in and with us and through us. And my hope is that every day, every moment, you breathe and you walk with God, that you exuberate that joy uh, and put it forth out to others as you go throughout your day. And we don't always have wonderful moments, do we? <laughs> Yesterday particularly was, was a, a long day for me. I, I just, honestly, I just felt some a spiritual attack. Just uh, my spirit was a little bit heavy for some reason. But at the end of the day, I just went to the Lord and I went to my journal and just asked for his power and his strength and wisdom. And um, I just spent some time preparing for the service today in the songs that I have chosen, and, and God really touched my heart. So before we begin our service today, I hope that you, once again, take a moment to go over to the Serenata page and just worship with our great God by just clicking through those links and even joining in on some of the songs that have lyrics. Feel free to go ahead and sing along today. So for our first order of business, I'd just like to go to the Lord in prayer and feel free if you ever have any prayer requests to just go ahead and send them to me. All you have to do is jump up to the contacts page and at the corner right of the website and go to the email link and you can just email those prayer requests for me to me so that I can include those in the service. So if you would, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Would you bow your heads and your hearts with me? Dear Lord, what an awesome privilege it is to come to you today. We thank you for all the gifts you have given us. So many we take for granted each and every day, Lord, like food, shelter, and clothing. And even in times of difficulty, Lord, we know that you do provide for us, that you do uh, provide not only material things, but also your, your spirit of strength and comfort and of hope, Lord, to get us through the tough times. So I just pray for everyone out there, those who are, who are sick, who are mourning the death of a loved one, who may be going through tough times financially, a job transition, pressures at school, at work. Lord, that you would especially comfort those people. Give them your hope, your courage, your power, your strength. Lord, draw them closer to you. One of our goals in the Christian walk is to become more like you. And there's no better place than through the trials, Lord, that you draw us into you as a mother hugs her children in her arms and surrounds her arms around the child and comforts them. And Lord, we know that you do the same. We know that we can lean on your everlasting arms. So I pray for all the unspoken needs out there today, that you would touch those people in a real, 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 real way and comfort them. Lord, also on my heart today is the shooting at LAX. We don't know the reason the shooter opened fire at the airport, Lord, a couple days ago, but we do know that one person was killed and others injured. And we just pray for the family of the victims, Lord. 
we pray that, first of all, for healing, that you would be with the doctors and nurses and give them wisdom in the treatment and care of the victims and just be with those who lost a loved one. Give them your perpetual comfort and let them know that you are with them and bring friends and family to surround them and comfort them during this difficult time. Mother God, also in my heart is the government of the U.S., Lord. We have some difficulty right now, and there's a lot of tension and a lot of argument and debate, and we just know, Lord, that members on both sides of the divide are trying to do what they think is right for the best of the people, Lord, and we just pray that you would give them your divine wisdom and strength, and and we pray that they would turn to you for answers, Lord, and guidance of these major decisions that guide our country. We also pray that other people would join in prayer and petition for our country, and not just focus on squalling and debate, Lord, but asking for your wisdom, Lord. We know that the strength of this country is because one of the reasons is we turn to you in situations um, not only of crisis, but in everyday, Lord. We are a Christian nation overall, and we thank you that you have blessed us in so many ways, and we uh, ask for your continued blessing and wisdom in these days ahead as we iron out difficulties. Lord, now as we go to your word, we just ask your empowerment. We just ask that you would speak to us in real, uh, tangible ways to touch our lives and in our hearts and prepare us for ministry, prepare us for your calling. Whatever gifts you have given us, and enable us to do your work. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of my message today is Prisms in the Sky. I really love this time of year, the time of fall, the time of autumn. In fact, I actually aimed, I actually named one of my pets Autumn because she was very beautiful and her coloring on her reminded me of fall, just different shades of, of brown. And uh, not only do I love um, that the different colors in the trees, but also I love the the cool weather. I love uh, not having to apply twice as much as deodorant. <laughs> but really, in the heat, you can't really take off clothes to get it cooler. But in the cooler weather, you can be comfortable because you can just add as many clothes as you want and reach that right temperature. Correct? But going back to the colors, what I love most of all is the fact that there are flowers in the trees as I as I think of them with the beautiful display and array of wonderful colors like bright reds and orange and and tangents of green and yellow and gold and I just think it's one of the most beautiful times of the year. Oftentimes we think of God as creator but I don't think often enough as of God as artists, when we just look out at this time of year in the trees and in the sky with the harvest, we can just see God's handiwork all around us, and it's it's such a great uh, blessing to be touched by the, the beautiful colors. Well, not only does God appreciate diversity in leaves and in nature, but also when people we see that in Jesus day in the first century AD when he started his mission at we know about age uh, 30 to 33 he actually did his mission uh, teaching people and training his disciples for about three years he 
really turned the tables upside down, not only in the temple, but just in his interactions with people. We see that Jesus met the woman at the well, for example, and this woman was a Samaritan, and at that time, Jews did not associate with Samaritans. So, first of all, that was surprising, that Jesus would, as a Jew, would mix with the Samaritan race. Now, you got to know a little bit of the history behind the Samaritans as to why the Jews did not intermix with the Samaritans. Way back in Old Testament times, and I can't at this point pinpoint the book, but uh, the Jews... (coughs) uh, intermixed with the Samaritans and so the Samaritans actually are are half Jewish and half Assyrian and so the Jews actually looked down at the Samaritans because they weren't fully Jewish and so they kind of snubbed their noses and turned up their faces at these people and thought that they were lesser but no Jesus goes to this woman not only as a Samaritan, but also as a woman. At that time, and you got to know a little bit about the, the culture at that time too, women were thought little more than property, little more than chattel. They didn't have any rights at all. And in fact, men didn't really even speak to women. And so it was very, very surprising that Jesus would even speak to this woman, that he would even acknowledge her and that he would even take the time to consider her needs and and what he could do for her. I actually have a a clip of Jesus, well, of actually a character portraying Jesus, uh, talking to this woman at the well, and I thought that that would be even more special to you, actually seeing it through video, um, as sometimes the scripture is brought to life by the talents of actors and uh just all those behind the video. So right below this message is a clip where you can watch this interaction on YouTube. And then I invite you to come on back for the rest of the sermon. And if you would, you can stop the video at uh, 3 minutes and 31 seconds. I know it's very tempting to go on, but, um, and of course, feel free to do that if the Lord leads. But um, if you would stop there and then come back to the sermon, that would be great. So here we see that Jesus values not only the diversity of people, the diversity of races, but also the diversity of sexes and also the equality of women with men. Uh, Genesis says that male and female were created in the image of God. And so God does value women as much as men. And in fact, Oftentimes I refer to God as she, and, and, and God can be looked at as she. I think and this is a, a minor ta- tangent, but this is something that is of uh, great importance on my heart. The fact that God is a woman, and for so many years, just like women have been ignored for thousands of years, and even in the Bible, um, which isn't right, um, we see in the Old Testament, they didn't even list the names of women because they didn't even think that was important. And of course, we see that, um, <laughs> you know, without women, men would not exist because women were given the great pl- privilege of bearing children. Um, but back to my point here, <laughs> sorry, sometimes I get off on tangents, but sometimes I think the spirit leads me on the tangent. So if you would just... Uh, buckle your seatbelt and go along for the ride, that would be great. Um, but anyway, God is she. That That's something that's really important to me, and I've shared my testimony with you as um, when my mother passed, my father had also died years before, and I, and I got to recognize God as parent, God as mother, God as father. And, you know, I think that falsehood has been taught for so many years that God is father, God is he, when that is not the case. That's just a, a blatant lie, and it's almost blasphemy me, my friends, uh, the fact that we have denied women access to God is mother, God is she, for those who, who do not have mothers, friends. So I, I hope that you will go along with me in that journey and, and just recognizing that God is mother too, that God is spirit, that God t- 
totally transcends uh, all humanity. That God is not a human, but is. We see in the Bible so many references to God as woman, and and a God is a, a gentle whisper, and and so there's many many proofs for um, God as mother and God as father. So if you will um, go with me along those lines, I would appreciate that, and and just acknowledge that femaleness of God, um, especially to to girls who need a motherly uh, figure in their lives. But anyway, back to our, our point here. Uh, so God does appreciate the diversity of sexes, the diversity of different cultures, the, diff the diversity of different races. In the weeks ahead, as I mentioned last summer, we're going to be looking at, at spiritual gifts. And uh, we see in many passages the validation that God gives each believer at least one gift, if not more gifts. And so we're going to be exploring exactly what those gifts are. And you're going to be finding out the gifts God has given you, particularly for the equipping of his kingdom. So where does the idea of spiritual gifts come from? I'm going to read to you a passage now in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 47. You've got to excuse me for a moment. My mouth is kind of getting a little bit dry, so I'm going to refresh with a cup of coffee. I'm sure many of you can relate to your morning coffee. Excuse me. I also get to sneak a glimpse of those beautiful yellow and orange leaves on the trees in my backyard. Now, 1 Corinthians 12, 4-7. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities. But this is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit or the common good. So, <laughs> you'll have to pardon my cat. I don't know if you can hear Sandy in the background, but he's saying hello as well. So, specifically, actually in the Greek, the, the word spiritual gifts, they come from two words. And the word gifts comes from the Greek word charismata. And the word spiritual is the plural form of spirit which is pneumatica so those are the Greek words where actually spiritual gifts comes from in the Bible number two what is the purpose of spiritual gifts well already in 1 Corinthians 12 7 we see that God gives gifts for the common good or the shared benefit of other people. So gifts aren't given to build us up. Of course, they do build us up because they're gifts. Um, so a gift, you know, helps us in our talents, but specifically they're, they're given with a godly purpose in mind to build up the body of Christ. And then we also see another purpose in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. So let me go ahead and read that to you. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. So... I see two purposes in this passage right here. Number one, so people would come to saving faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And particularly, we see that the gift of evangelism in evangelists, of course, but pastors and apostles. Now, that is not to neglect the fact that we all have, as Christians, a duty to evangelize. Because in Matthew 28... Um, 19, 
the verse reads, Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that is not a command right there to just people in ministry, but a command to all believers to share the good news of Jesus Christ. But specifically, some people have that gift, and that's what they're particularly called to do. I think of an example of, of Billy Graham and how he is a gifted evangelist and how he has used his gift to share Christ with people all around the world. But my friends, also, in this day and age, I believe that friendship evangelism, just getting to know a coworker at work and inviting them to coffee and just uh, being a part of their life uh, and uh, uh, doing something out of the ordinary for someone um, to, as a way to, to help them and to show that our Christianity, Christianity isn't just all talk, but it is also will walk. That's one of the most uh, key and instrumental ways that you can witness to someone today as well. And that's really a message for a whole another sermon, um, just how to witness to other people. But that's just an example of um, a person who has a gift of evangelism, uh, Reverend Billy Graham, and how God has used that gift to influence Christ all over the world. And back to the passage now. Secondly, we see that God gives gifts to help us become mature and growing believers in Jesus Christ. And the wording here, I really like in this in these verses. It says, "To the measure of the full stature of Christ." So you're asking, well, okay, we know where. We, we have the validation for spiritual gifts in the Bible, um, charismata and pneumatica, spiritual gifts, and we know the purpose for spiritual gifts, for the to build up the body of Christ and to be mature in Christ as believers. But where specifically in the Bible does it talk about all these gifts? And where can I find a listing of all the, these gifts, you may ask? Well, particularly in three passages we see the list of gifts. The first one is Romans 12, 6 through 8, and I'm not actually going to go through each of these individually. If you want, you can go ahead and look these up, and, I'm, and I may post my outline this time so you can actually go through and look at the gifts if you want to, but as I said earlier, we're going to go through these in depth, e each passage. Um, so I'm just going to touch on them here because this is just an overview of the spiritual gifts. Secondly, we find spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, and then also 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Um, so there you have it. There's an overview of spiritual gifts. I'm also going to be posting a survey, a spiritual gift survey, uh, later on today. I haven't actually had the time to actually investigate what would be the best survey for you to take. So that may take some time. Um, so look for that posting uh, later on today, which is Sunday. For those of you in in Europe and in other parts of the world, it might be Monday until I get to it. But go ahead and look for that survey. So just as a review uh, today, we know that God does give a spiritual gift, at least one spiritual gift to each and every believer. We see where spiritual gifts come from, uh, the purpose of spiritual gifts to build the body of Christ and to help out other uh, believers and, and even to reach out to non-believers, of course, uh, with the good news of Jesus Christ. And then also we see where the passages of spiritual gifts are and where you can actually find all the gifts that are talking talked about. So your assignment for this week is once I post that link to actually go through that survey and find out what your spiritual gifts are. And so that will actually give you a feel um, for 
what more of the gifts are and it'll actually hone in on and pinpoint your gifts or gift that God has given you to for the common good and to build up the body of Christ. So let's go ahead and go to God in prayer right now. Dear God, we just thank you that you include us in the work of your kingdom. What a special and great honor that is, Lord, to be, first of all, entrusted with that power and that gift to be used as a partner in your ministry to reach other people with your good news and, and your love, Lord. We see that you use us as humans to reach our fellow humans. And this goes back to Jesus Christ, Lord, why you sent Jesus as man so that Jesus could relate directly to us that uh, as we saw in Hebrews last week, that Jesus Christ knows our every weakness and has been tempted like we have been tempted, Lord, and has overcome. So just as Jesus Christ can relate to us as fully God and fully man, Lord, as humans, we can touch others with the gift you have given us to better your kingdom and partner with you to distribute the love of God to other people. So we just pray right now uh, that you would be with us and that you would help us as we take this survey to, follow, to find out what our gift is and to become familiar with the other gifts, Lord, and that we wouldn't uh, hide our gift in our heart. No, that we would take our gift and, and just share it with the world, with other people, to partner in your work and, and ministry and uh, to spread your love around. Be with us this week. In his name we pray. Amen. Now, as you go forth through this week, I pray a blessing upon you. May God's peace and God's power and God's presence be with you and in you and through you as you go and be an instrument of God's love and grace and gift to other humanity. In Jesus' name.